Now, there is a thing called a sale leaseback. This sale leaseback is actually a financial trick. And I'm telling you now, this is more common in your publicly traded companies than it is less common. Because as a, a company, and let's just pick Chili's or BW3's or Home Depot, they don't really want to own the property because they can't depreciate the land it sits on. You cannot depreciate land on your taxes. And why do I want to spend a million dollars to buy that corner? Because that's a million dollars I now can't use in something else. And BW3s is not in that business. They're in the wings business. I don't want to spend a million of my dollars just to get the land. So what they could do is lease that property. And there are some companies that will buy it. CVS is a very common one. CVS will buy the land, borrow money, take out a long-term mortgage, and then they will build the property how they like it. And if you've ever noticed, CVS has three setups. They have a left, a right, and a middle. If you walk in the front door, the pharmacy is down the left side, or it's down the right side, or it's straight back in the middle. Those are the three. So then what they do once they get it built, now they go out and they find an investor to buy the building from them. And in that purchase, they agree to lease it back from the tenant. I'm sorry, lease it back from the landlord, right? Who's the best tenant to be there? The one that's already there, the one that built it so that they like it. So what happens is, as an example, CVS goes out and borrows $2 million they build a new CVS, they staff it, they uh, stock it, they open the doors, and then they go to an investor and they go, hey, dude, buy this building for $2 million. It will take me off the loan, and then I will lease it back from you for a 30-year lease at some interest rate that will make you a return on that $2 million. As an investor, that investor is going to go, well, if I had $2 million, I could put it in the bank and earn 1%. And maybe not that. Or, using the present value of money and time, which we're not going to get into that, I could use that money to buy this CVS, and CVS will pay me a monthly rental income of $11,433 a month for the next 30 years, guaranteed by the CVS Corporation. And over those 30 years, I am going to make 5.5% on my money. Once again, back to what I talked about. In this particular example, that investor has turned cash, $2 million, into cash flow, $11,833 a month for the next 30 years. They have, in essence, almost become the secondary market for this CVS. The CVS will sell it to an investor and then lease it back from the landlord. That is called a sale lease back. It is very common, believe it or not, in commercially traded companies. Yum, that has Pepsi and uh, uh, Pizza Hut and Kentucky Fried Chicken and A&W and um, Taco Bell, I think. Um, CVS's don't. Wal uh, uh, Walmart actually does own. Uh, Home Depot, you got $15 million laying around. You can buy a Home Depot and Home Depot will sign, lease it back from you for 30-year lease. And we'll talk more about it when we get into that leasehold estate. That is called a sale leaseback, all right? A buy-down is a permanent or temporary prepayment of the 
interest rate up front. Virtually the same concept that I was just saying. Instead of you paying a high interest rate, you may use that present value of money calculation and figure out, well, in today's dollars, that's $1,100 today, I'll just pay the $1,100. So theoretically, if you call your mortgage loan originator or your mortgage broker and said, hey, dude, what's the interest rate today? If that guy was really, 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 really good, he would say, what do you want it to be? Because it's market is six and a half percent. But you want a 4% interest rate? I can get you a 4% interest rate on your loan. It's only going to cost you $10,000 up front at closing, and we will buy down the interest rate. It's a prepayment penalty. Or <laughs> no, it's not. It's a prepayment of interest, all right? And I just made those numbers up. I'm not telling you it's uh, 10,000 for 2%. What it's the math depends on the current interest rate. You want a 5%? Maybe it's only going to be $3,000 at closing. So you can buy down the interest rate. This is usually an incentive for new home builders because they can take the hit in the price of the home or what they actually do is just jack the price of the home up enough to cover that and make you think that's a $420,000 house when really it's a $410,000, but we've jacked the price up so we can then buy it down and make you feel better about yourself. But I'm not bitter at all about that. All right. Now, the home equity loan uh, is very similar ex to the open end, only in the open end we talked about you have the ability Ability to borrow the money. Home equity loan, typically by definition, is where you take the money when you get it. All right. You get approved for twenty thousand. You take all twenty out, and you go around the world in a cruise trip, and you know pay off your credit cards and do all that. And they record that, and it becomes a junior lien in your on your title. So now you've got that first lien for. 100000 to fifth third, and now you have this home equity line of credit for 50000 and you start making payments on it immediately, all right? So in all of this financing, there are or there were some people that maybe weren't as honest as they should have been. So the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau that was created out of the Dodd-Frank Act has this thing called the Truth in Lending Act, TILA, T-I-L-A, Truth in Lending Act, and Regulation Z, which covers the advertisement of financial lending institutions. It requires that a lender be truthful in all of the costs associated with borrowing money. And obviously, the most important one is the interest rate. They want to interest, want to make sure that the lender is truthful and honest and tells the consumer all of the fees. It applies when there is a residential loan collateralizing it. That's how we get in here. Now, TILA, the Truth in Lending Act, doesn't, this is kind of funny to me, it doesn't apply on business loans, commercial loans, agricultural loans. It does not apply to large loan, uh, lo loans on large tracts of property like 50 acres. I think 25 is the minimum. So what, when it says it does not apply, that kind of makes you feel like, oh, shit, they can lie to me, right? Because the Truth in Lending Act doesn't apply. It's not quite that bad, but that's always what I laugh at. So it, the purpose is to make sure that the consumer is fully aware or fully informed on all of the charges that that lender is going to charge, like the interest rate the discount points, 
the service charge, the origination fee. What was going on back in the day was a lender would say, we're going to loan you a hundred grand and we're going to charge one point loan origination fee. Now quickly, how much would that be? A thousand dollars, right? One point of a hundred thousand dollar loan is one thousand dollars. And then what would happen is they would show up at closing and that loan origination fee was now three and a half because the lender wanted to. And they, what was the buyer going to do? Not close. And now they're paying three and a half. That was the unscrupulous activities that were going on. That's where this came about so that the consumer would be fully aware of all of these charges. Okay. Now, Regulation Z applies to someone who is a creditor and gives credit to the consumer. And there is a definition to whom a creditor is defined as. A creditor under the United States uh, rules is someone who extends consumer credit more than 25 times in one year, like Rent-A-Center, all right? They would be considered a consumer creditor. Or more than five times a year, if that loan was secured by a first lien residential collateral, i.e. a mortgage. This is how we, as the mortgage world and the real estate world, get drug into this because the lender does it more than five when it involves the security of a dwelling, like the mortgage. 